Hello, I am Larry, and I will be your host for today's video where we show you how to get the best out of your Zoom court appearance. Here at TimeServe, we pride ourselves in designing a top-notch plan to get the best possible outcome from your presiding judge. In today's example, we take a live look into Judge Bryant's courtroom and focus on two separate defendants. There will be several things to look for that check the boxes for best practices. Let's dive in, shall we? So, Ms. Bria, um, don't ever do what you did when you first came in here. Don't ever do that again. Now, I'm not sure if you're confused as to where you are, but you are at 36 District Court. I am Judge Lanice Bryant. If you ever yell at me like that again, you're going to find yourself in contempt of court and in jail. Now, what, what's going on with you this morning? I don't know why you think you could yell at me and walk around and, and hold up chairs and all of that to me. And, and it looked like you still got an attitude because you're looking up in the sky and in the ceiling. So it looked like you might need to come to court in person, ma'am. It looks like that you may need to come in person. And I'm going to highlight the courtroom for you and let you understand that court is open to you. There are people in the courtroom, and it looks like you might need to be one of them. So if you came on here this morning to be rude, disrespectful to me, you need to log off. Because I'm not going to allow that to occur. And it's too early in the morning for it to occur. No, you don't need to raise your hand. I'm saying what I'm saying because you did it in front of me holding up a chair and shaking a chair at me. And I just don't know who you thought you was talking to. I'm gonna send you to a breakout room. You're gonna wait in there until the lawyer comes in to speak with you. But you do need to adjust your behavior and your attitude because it's gonna end you up in jail. No ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. Anything you need to say, say it when you get into the lawyer with the lawyer. I'm telling you what you did and what was inappropriate. And no explanation that you're gonna give me is going to be uh, acceptable. Your behavior was inappropriate. Everything you did was inappropriate. Now, please accept to join the breakout room. A, for a few moments later. Not good. Um, but let me see. I placed Miss Bates on probation. Um, October 6, 2022, for 12 months. And she was ordered to attend Gamblers Anonymous, Gamblers Counseling, um, paid $510, and then I converted uh, $310 of that, which I should have converted $300. Anyway, uh, I converted $310 to 31 hours of community service, and then I continued her for review April 4th. On April 4th, she failed to appear. We rescheduled instead of issuing a warrant for her arrest. We rescheduled it for today, May 16th. And then here we are with a bad report. So the report says that she has a balance still of $201. She has not, she completed gambler's counseling. She has failed to provide proof of Gamblers Anonymous, and she has failed to report or contact probation. Ms. Stevenson. So, um, I don't, I, I, ha I thought that Ms. Bates had been in contact with probation, Your Honor, so I would have to, I don't have anything to say about that. Um, through my conversation with Ms. Bates, she unfortunately was under the uh, incorrect um, impression that that she only had to do gamblers counseling. 
And I guess maybe that shows that she really wasn't in contact with probation because Ms. McCall would have been able to clear that up for her. Um, but she has, um, I know that she has sent some proof of compliance to Ms. McCall. So I know that there's been some contact with her, but we have not completed the Gamblers Anonymous. She thought that that was, that that was Gamblers Counseling. She did the counseling. She didn't um, think it though. She didn't think it, but go ahead. Thank you, Judge. And so Ms. Bates has been, um, frankly, struggling with her housing. Um, she's trying to keep her, her income coming in, Your Honor, um, because of the nature of the kind of work that she's doing is not steady. She's a, a, a salon operator, Your Honor, but her income is very, very, very sporadic at this time, and her expenses, unfortunately, are pretty high. Despite that, um, she did finish the counseling. Um, and she's provided proof of that, I believe, to the probation department. So we're, again, not totally absent from communication with Ms. McCall. I would ask the court in that um, Ms. Bates is here today. I don't have an explanation as to why we missed the April 4th date, but she is here today, Your Honor, uh, not having told, you know, disregarded this court's order. I think she's struggling. Um, I think she is managing her addiction. I think she is uh, staying out of the casinos because she just frankly can't afford that right now. Um, and I'm asking the court to give her an opportunity to take care of the money um, and to get, get into the Gamblers Anonymous meetings, Your Honor, which are online pretty easy to do. I believe that if Ms. Bates had understood that that was something that she had to do, that she would have done that. Um, and so well, I'm asking the court to give her an opportunity to do so, Your Honor. There are a couple of things. Number one, Ms. Ms. McCaw's report doesn't even mention the community service. Okay. Does not, it does not even mention the community service. Um, so Mr. Flanagan, I don't know if, I don't know, but probation needs to be made aware that Ms. Bates is supposed to be doing 300, I'm sorry, 31 hours of community service. You hear me, but it's paused. There you go. Okay. Let's not do that again. All right. So I need you to send that over to probation um, okay. to make sure that they are aware. Number two, when I speak, I am very clear um, about my orders. I definitely said gamblers counseling and gamblers anonymous twice monthly. Additionally, the court mailed a copy of its order to Ms. Bates at the address on Woodingham Street. Now, that's your problem. It's not helping you, so you probably just want to not respond. On the date of this sentencing, I'm also sure that I said, because I say it every time we will mail a copy of the court's order to the address that we have on file or to the address that is going to be provided by the defense attorney we're not going to hunt her down to try to find out where she lives so if the address was not correct then it should have been corrected And probably part of the problem is she might have had the same attitude then that she got now. Right? You do stop talking, ma'am. I know the difference. Your, you, your eyes turn into the side, your head turn into the side, your head is what you're continuing to talk when I'm talking, which is not going to be work out good for you. Now it's going to work out good for me, but it's not going to work out good for you. 
And so it's confusing me that a person who says they don't have an attitude would be talking while I'm, I'm gonna revoke the probation. Let's do that. All right, so I changed my mind. Let's just do this. All right, you go talk to her in the breakout room where you probably should have told her, tell her what, um, what the probation be. I your, will, Your Honor. Your assistant left? Um, we have an emergency that you take care of. Okay. Yeah, you, you talked to Ms. Bates in the breakout room about her non-attitude and the fact that her body language says she has an attitude. She got them sunglasses on top of her head, which I first didn't tell her to take off. She looking up in the sky. She She's blading her, her face to the court, which is the equivalent of standing at the podium and turning to the side. So she's she's equivalent to standing at the podium turning to the side. I'll send her to a breakout room, which she may not be able to see because her eyes up in the ceiling. And then you can talk to her in the breakout room and finish getting the other people ready too. And then I'm going to take a break. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. At 8.25, Yes. Are you able to unmute? She can. If she tries again, she can unmute. There you go. That is it. Sequela Ajima Bates. Okay. Ms. Stevenson, I already said what I said. I understand, Your Honor. And I am asking the court to reconsider um, its order to revoke probation. Um, and I would ask the court again to give Ms. Bates an opportunity to come fully into compliance. We would apologize to the court, Your Honor, and um, just kind of set a, a frame of reference for the court here. Um, and it, I, would, it, I would take responsibility in part, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Bates has had a lot of issues going on your honor which are kind of personal in nature so Not i was hoping too. i got a lot of personal issues going on me too <laughs> me okay, too and i a lot a lot i mean a lot it's, and it's I'm, just overwhelming at times okay and so and i'm and i'm thankful for um the court's ability. I'm thankful for my own personal ability. I'm thankful for the ability of everybody who has a lot going on, but is able all the time really to um, make sure that our frustrations are not improperly projected. Um, and I think that that's a skill that Ms. Bates is going to continue to work on. She is under, you know, I, I have issues going on right now, Your Honor, but but I'm not struggling with homelessness. I'm not struggling with um with the state it doesn't matter what you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with. Your struggle is your struggle. Yes. My struggle is my struggle. Miss Bates' struggle is her struggle. Mr. Flanagan's struggle is his struggle. We all have struggles. If you knew what Mr. Flanagan was going through right now, you might double back and be like, oh, okay. We all have struggles, but he comes to work every day with a pleasant attitude, with a just helpful, just on top of his job, all of this. So we all got struggle. I've been homeless. So telling me she's struggling with homelessness, what that mean to me? When I was homeless, I wasn't somewhere just taking it out on other people. And we're no, not. I was being nicer. I was being nicer because I was thinking they're going to let me stay here this summer so I could take these classes. Oh, they're going to let me room with them, even though I can't m match up to the whole rent so I could take these classes. So I won't be somewhere living under the viaduct. Okay, we, we got struggles. Let's go. And I'm thankful that 
the court has the wherewithal. I'm thankful that Mr. Flanagan has the wherewithal. I'm thankful that I have the intestinal fortitude, Your Honor, to be able to make sure that I do not improperly project my frustrations upon other people. And I am looking forward to the time when Ms. Bates will be able to do that as well. Um, she understands that you have not created the situations that she has to deal with. And she understands that um, it's not appropriate for her to do anything other than do everything in her power and that beyond her power to move successfully through this probation. Um, with that, Your Honor, the crime with which Ms. Bates is convicted, Your Honor, is a crime in which I would just argue she's the only victim. Um, I wouldn't argue but, that because whoever living with her might be victim too. They might, whoever living with her might be a victim too, which is why they make it a crime because they're trying to save people from themselves. So when you go gamble away your money, but you're supposed to be paying your bills, you're not the only victim. You are not the only victim. Society becomes a victim. The people that depend on you become victims, which is why they make that a crime. But go ahead, Ms. Stevenson. I think they make it a crime, Your Honor. I would, based upon what members of the Attorney General staff told me, is they call themselves helping people. And so, they Ms. don't know. Bates. They're not the legislatures. They are the attorney general office. <laughs> okay. Because after a while, she's going to start um, robbing people to, to gamble. That's They make it a crime so it could stop other things from happening. But go ahead. I, I keep and, on interrupting today. <laughs> Thank and you, I Judge. Normally, I it's don't know okay. interrupt well, because I, I just I keep get... hearing a lot of excuses. I keep hearing all these excuses. That's what I'm hearing, which is why I keep interrupting you. But I'm going to be quiet. Go ahead. It, and I think that it's also because this is a pretty impassioned situation, Your Honor. And so I do appreciate the court being impassioned about this. Um, I just want the court to give Ms. Bates the opportunity to continue toward compliance, Your Honor. I, I just want the court to let her get the gamblers, gamblers anonymous out of the way. I want the court to give her an opportunity to do the community service. I want the court to recognize the gamblers counseling that she has already completed, Your Honor, so that she's not a person who's taken a gambling addiction to the next level and, and absolutely ruined her life and the lives of others um, that are dependent upon her. Ms. Bates, you know, I don't want the court to be left with the impression that I'm providing an excuse, but I do want the court to understand that Ms. Bates um, is struggling, that she's struggling with be meeting basic needs, Your Honor. That's not the court's fault. That doesn't mean that Ms. Bates can come here and do anything other than what she's supposed to do as a, as a defendant before the criminal court. But it she she has a lot going on and so she's not trying to be disrespectful to this court she's not trying to present as somebody who has an attitude she's trying to keep her life together she's trying to run that business she's sleeping in the place of her business trying to figure out where she's going to eat trying to keep the business going trying to be a mother trying to get housing and trying to get done with this probation and succeeding to an extent it's, she's not finished with it but she has not um, just blown the probation off. And I asked the court to give her credit for what she's done. And I asked the court to give her an opportunity to keep moving it forward. Her struggle, as I, I agree with the court completely, her struggle is her struggle. And, and I think she's doing what she can do. She's got to do a little bit better, but she's working on it. I think she's doing what she can do to manage her struggle. So, and I'm asking the court to give her an opportunity to continue, Your Honor. At the end of the day, I placed Ms. Bates on a 12 month probationary period in October. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm looking at my note and it's actually non-reporting uh, probation. So the fact that she's not reporting to probation is not an issue except that they need to give her the community service. But here's the thing about that. Today wouldn't have even been an issue if Ms. Bates had come on here respectful. She started shaking her head from the very beginning when I was first talking and I said she missed that April date. She's shaking her head like she didn't miss the April date when everybody on here except her know that she missed the April date. The, her, her, her probation order, um, 
her review date was December 20th. And then uh, whenever we came, I I wrote on her probation order. Uh, let me see what date that was. Yeah, December 20th was her review. Then I, I said I will continue it to April 4th, probably because you all said, can I continue it so she could be ready at the halfway point? We continued it to April 4th. She didn't come. I was here. You was here. The court reporter was here. The clerk was here. Everybody was here. Miss Bates didn't come. I didn't issue a warrant for her arrest. I rescheduled it. I rescheduled it to today, which is why it is on the docket for 10.05, because that indicates to the court that she failed to appear the last time. And when I said that originally, she was shaking her head, shaking her head like she that didn't happen. Well, we all know that it did happen. Ma'am, put your hand down. Put your hand down. It's my turn. We're not in school. And then that would have been okay. We, you're giving the report, and then I'm, I say what I'm saying. She's, she still has six whole months on the original probation. So it wouldn't even be an issue. If she had not projected her frustration about her life onto me, and this court, which has nothing to do with her situation and her life, it would have been a routine, continue the matter to the final review date. Routine, routine. Then when I acknowledged, uh, uh, or I don't know if, if acknowledge is the word that I, I really intend to use, but when I pointed out that Miss. Bates had an attitude because I know attitude when I see it because I know what it means when you're looking up in the ceiling like this. Because I know what attitude means. Because I, because I am the person uh, considered homeless at the age of 16 by the government because I didn't have a place to go to call my own because I know how to roll my eyes and smack my lips with the best of them. But what I have the good sense to do and to know is that if an individual has some ability, some authority over me, if an individual has some a mechanism to make my life worse because of a situation that I put myself in, then I'm not gonna smack my lips and roll my eyes. That would be like getting stopped for speeding and then smacking my lips and rolling my eyes at the officer because they're doing their job and they pulled me over and stopped me. He didn't tell me to speed, he or she. They didn't tell me to speed. Had I been abiding by the, the speed limit, they wouldn't have been able to stop me. They could have, but, right? So I, all of this right here, and you can say whatever you want to say about Miss Bates, but when I look at her, she's old enough to know better. She's old enough to understand that her personal situation is not mine. And if she wants empathy from this court, then she allows her attorney to, to advise me of those situations. At the end of the day, she was a gambling disassociated person. At the end of the day, she put her name on the list, on a list, and she consented to them treating her as a criminal. She put her name on the list and consented to being treated as a criminal if she violated that list. I didn't do that. I didn't put my name on anybody's list. I didn't violate the terms of me putting my name on somebody's list. So yeah, okay. What we're not going to do and what I'm not going to continue to do is allow people to come to court and take out every frustration they have on me and then make me have to increase my time with therapists. Insurance only going to pay for so many sessions with the therapist. But when an individual comes to work and volunteers themselves to be beat up by other people, because of the stuff that the other person is going through that has nothing to do with me, that's, that sounds like insanity. So I didn't do anything to you, Miss Bates. I don't know what your situation is, but you're not the first person to have to live in their office. And you won't be the last person.
to have to live in their office. You're not the first person that had to struggle and figure out how, where they were going to live. And you're not the last person. But I'm certain if I had taken out my frustration about not having some place to live uh, 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 out on the, the officers or the, the school or somebody else, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. So let's just, you know, let's just do what we got to do. But don't come in here fussing at me and rolling your eyes at me and looking up in the ceiling at me. So the only reason I said I was going to revoke the probation is because I was clear that Ms. Bates did not want to participate based on her attitude, based upon her continuing to talk while I was talking. And but for the fact that she was muted, she would have been over talking me. And so that's the only reason that I said I was going to revoke the probation. Ms. Bates still has until October of this year to come into compliance with the probation, a probation on an issue people who have gambling addiction. It's the same that I feel about drug addiction. However, once you step in the courtroom, it is criminal. It's criminal. I didn't make it criminal. And in this case, as I said, I didn't put my name on a voluntary list. So we're going to continue the probation to its conclusion. But let me be clear. If you're not able to keep your emotions under control, it probably would be better for you just not to come to court. Because if you come to court and your emotions are not in control, it would be a shame or you say gambling or you say, because I couldn't keep my emotions under control when I went to court. I don't come to work to get beat up. I don't come to work to be disrespected. I don't come to work to have people over talk me and roll their eyes at me and all of that. I don't do that. I don't. I don't wake up in the morning cheerful about my job and say, oh, I cannot wait to get to work so the people can go off on me, so the people can clown me, so the people can act like I'm the reason that they're in court. Nobody does that. It's not enough money. I don't make enough money. I'll continue her to the final review. Mr. Flanagan, what's her final review date? October 5th, Your Honor. Thank you. Let me make sure that's still a good day for the court. October 5th is a Thursday. Do it. Does it have a time on it? No, ma'am. I'm going to set it at 1.30. And I'm going to change her probation to reporting probation. I'm not going to add any fees. but I need her to be in touch with probation so that they can make sure she does the community service and get information about the Gamblers Anonymous if she needs it. Anything further? Just one second. Um, no, nothing further at this time. We thank the court very much, Your Honor. All right, then we're all set. Until October 5th, have a great day and stay safe. Thank you, Your Honor. Wow. Absolute idiocracy at its best. Eye rolls, chair tossing, back talk, and no eye contact were just a few examples of how to get your judge to go nuclear. And if you're trying to get a lighter sentence, well, this is definitely the way to act. I'm Time, and you have been served. And don't forget to like and subscribe and never miss these how-to videos. Bye. Bye.